welcome to Linear Inequalities. Uh, just before we start, uh, just a reminder, there is an auto chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So just to begin with, uh, just uh, having a look at the symbols that we're going to see during today's video. Um, we're looking at inequalities. Um, now we have this symbol, which is an equal sign. Now that means that uh, whatever is on the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now an inequality means that it may well be equal, but it could also be more than or less than uh, one side. And so we just need to have a quick check as to um, what the different uh, phrases mean. So the first one is an arrow pointing to the right. Um, and this means greater than. Now um, in this sense, um, you may use it in this way. So six is greater than four. So the large side of the um, symbol is with the larger value. In the uh, other direction, pointing to the left, well, that would mean less than. And that is saying, in this case, we would write it the other way around. So four is less than six. The next one has an equal sign underneath it. Now, what that uh, means is um, we're back to greater than, but it could also mean equal to. And so um, this would be true, that six is greater than or equal to four. This is also true, six is greater than or equal to six. And so uh, both of those are correct in this case. The last one is pointing in there to the left. So again, it is less than, but again, it has that line underneath, which means that it could be equal to as well. So in this next situation, we're going to look at how we can actually uh, represent these inequalities on a number line. And in every case, the number that is uh, used within the um, within the inequality is the most important part to start with. Um, so in this case, we've got the number six. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle at six. Now, in this case, it tells me that x is less than six. Now, the way that the arrow is pointing is actually quite helpful here because what we can do is we can just grab an arrow and draw it in that direction. Um, so from the six, we can just draw an arrow going off to the left hand side. And that is how we would show that x is less than six. If we look at the next one, it says x is greater than or equal to two. So the first thing is we're going to need a circle at the number two, but how do we distinguish between what is an inequality sign that doesn't have the equal sign and an inequality sign that does have the equal sign. Well, it's very simple. If we can include it, then we color it in. And so um, if you see a less than or, or equal to or a greater than or equal to, you color in the circle. Then when it comes to the arrow, all we do is draw it from that side. So there we go. It's greater than or equal to two, so it goes to the right. Next, we have that x is greater than negative four. So again, all I want to do, the number involved is negative four, so I'm going to draw a circle. It doesn't have an equal sign, so I'm not going to color it in. And then it is greater than negative four, and so I will continue an arrow in that direction. Next, we have that x is less than or equal to negative four. So again, I'm just going to go to negative four and draw a circle. It is a less than or equal to though, so because of that equal sign, I'm going to color in the circle. And then my arrow, well, it is a less than, therefore it wants to go to the left and be marked on like that. Now, the final two, um, we will see um, a double inequality. What it means is that x is in a, uh, within a range of values. And so we've been given two different numbers. We've been given negative three and we've been given six. Now, what we need to do first is just check um, which one of these has an equal sign with it. Well, it's only the six. And so that one is going to be colored in. And in this situation, what it's telling me is that x is between those two values. So negative three is less than x. 
and x is less than or equal to 6. And so when we draw in the line this time, all we're actually going to do is a line which joins together the two circles. We don't need an arrow this time because it's not extending beyond any, uh, any of those values. The value of x is somewhere in that range. The final one, negative 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. So again, start with this circle at negative 5 and a circle at 2. They are both equal to in this case and therefore we're going to colour them both in and x lies in between those two points and so we'll just draw a line which joins them together. Like that. So next we're told that x is an integer and we are asked to list all of the possible values in each case. So with this one what we need to do is we just need to understand um, what the limits of the, uh, of the inequality actually mean. Now, this first one says negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 3. Now, what that means is um, if we look at the two ends, we've got the numbers negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, within this, we just need to check which of those values can actually happen. Well, if we look at the first symbol, there is no equal to sign and therefore negative 2 cannot be part of our list. If we look at the top end at 3 it is less than or equal to 3 and so 3 is acceptable and so our list of all of the possible values is negative 1, 0, 1, 2 or 3. In our next one we have a range from negative 4 to 0 so that will be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0 and using the signs, this time there is an equals to on the negative 4, so that's absolutely fine. And there's an equals to on the 0, so that's exactly fine. And so our list is exactly what we wrote down to begin with. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 and 0. For the list 0 to 6, well that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six but again we just need to check those uh, different symbols so the first part that is a less than uh, sorry a greater than or equal to and therefore zero is absolutely fine but at the end this is a less than six and so six cannot count so we are left with just zero one two three four five and our last one we have negative one to one so the all the options here will be negative one 0 and 1. Can we include all of those values? Well the first symbol here is just a greater than which means that negative 1 is not included. The next one is a less than or equal to and therefore the positive one is fine and so it would be 0 and 1. Okay, so in our final section, we're asked to display the solution to each inequality on the number line. Now, to do this, we are going to have to actually solve the inequalities. And this is done in just the same way as you would solve an equation. And so we deal with um, a balancing process, doing the same to both sides of the inequality. And so in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4. And I'll do that on both sides. So 3x plus 4, if I take away 4, I'm left with 3x. And 13 take away 4, well that is 9. In order to solve it, I would then need to divide by 3. Do that to both sides. So 3x divided by 3 is x. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so the solution to the inequality is that x is less than 3. And so all we would want to do is we would want to draw a circle at 3. And in this case, it's a less than, not an equals to, so we don't need to worry about colouring it in. But then we just need to draw on our arrow to say that it will be to the left. In the second example, we have x's on both sides of our inequality. That is absolutely fine. We're still going to go through the same process. In this case, 
the first thing I would want to do is to remove the smallest amount of x and so I'm going to subtract a single x. If I subtract a single x, well that would be x plus 1 on the left hand side. On the right hand side I would just have 4. I would then subtract 1. If I subtract 1 from both sides I get x is greater than 3. And so in the um, uh, in the number line a circle at 3 it's a greater than there's no equal to sign so it just is um, an open circle and then an arrow pointing to the right the last example though this is the one that is most uh, most important because we have a double inequality here and we need to know how to deal with this and the way that we deal with it is to actually take it as two separate questions and so the first one is that negative 5 is less than 2x plus 1 the second one is that 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 7 we have two separate inequalities which we will bring back together at the end and so in this case if I were to solve this I would need to subtract 1 on both sides so negative 5 take away 1 is negative 6. 2x plus 1 take away 1 is just 2x. And then I would need to divide by 2. And if I divide by 2, I get negative 3 is less than x. For the other side of that inequality, same process. Um, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x is less than or equal to 6. If I then divide by 2, well x is less than or equal to 3. Now if I bring those back together, x is in the center of both of the inequalities. From the left hand side, I can say that x is greater than negative 3. But from the right hand side I can say that it's also less than or equal to positive 3 and so if I'm going to display this on the number line I will need a circle at negative 3 and a circle at positive 3 and in this case it cannot include the negative 3 so it's an open circle but it can include positive 3 so we color it and then x lies in between so we draw a line joining them together. And we will end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in November 2018 and it was foundation paper 3. And we've been asked to solve 3x plus 5 is greater than or equal to x plus 17. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up in just the same way as I would try to solve an equation. I'm going to give myself some little tram lines to keep track of my method and so in this case whenever there is an x on both sides I always try to get rid of the smallest amount of x first and that in this case would be the 1x from the right hand side so I'm going to subtract x from both sides if I do that 3x take away x is 2x and it's still plus 5 and that is greater than 17 now all I want to do is keep working my way backwards so I'm going to take away 5 on both sides so 2x is greater than or equal to 12 and finally in order to get x all on its own I'm going to divide by 2 and therefore x is greater than or equal to 6 and we have solved the inequality.